Welcome to Lawn Chair Social. I'm Kevin. I'm Marcos. And we're here at the Discovery Ballparks in Pleasant Grove to capture this awesome sunrise. It's about 6 a.m. right now, 50 degrees, so a little bit cold, but we're excited to start our first episode of our podcast. So us here at Lawn Chair Social, we had this idea a couple weeks running now where we wanted to encapsulate the deep conversations and late night talks that you have with your friends and our lawn chairs are here to symbolize that when you're just hanging out you get into deep conversations you get into the random questions that you would normally never ask in your everyday life that's what we want to bring to our podcast uh, somewhere where you can take our conversations and ask your family members ask your friends use them as conversation starters so that's what we're going to be about and we're super excited to finally get this rolling. Like I said, it's a couple weeks coming now, but we're going to jump into it. You know, uh, we're going to record a couple episodes today and, and bring them to you every week. So keep a watch out. You know, we're on Instagram. We're going to be on YouTube. We're going to have our podcast um, on Spotify and Apple Music as well. So um, definitely use those platforms and tune in. Yeah. Just remember these lawn chairs there. They're just a symbol. We know these talks can happen anywhere, you know. They can happen at school, in the car, and we just want to help you guys, you know, enjoy those those moments because, you know, how long are we really here for? When's the last moment you'll talk to someone you don't know? So we'll try and help you guys, and you guys can try and help us just make every moment meaningful. No, exactly. And we want it to be kind of a community as well. Um, get DMs from you guys, comments of what topics you want us to talk about, what questions you guys have, your favorite conversation starters. Um, and one thing I just want to acknowledge real quick, that whole intro, my Red Bull did fall down and is about halfway empty now. So I'm a little sad, <laughs> but I'll, I'll get over it. I'll get over it. All right, so got our sunset coming. Lighting's nice. First episode, what we wanted to do, we have a, a couple questions that we asked each other, and we're going to answer them how we are now in our mentality now as a 24-year-old and 25. How old are you? 25? Are I you think? 25? I don't know. Okay. I can't remember. Uh, I stopped counting after 21. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to answer it now, and then we're going to think back to how we would answer when we were teenagers, you know, 13, 14 years old, and just see kind of how different our, our lives are and our minds are, really. So, first question for you, Marcos. When you were 13, what was your dream job? And then what's your dream job now? Well, when I was 13... And I think I was still maybe in that phase where every job was my dream job, you know, scientist, policeman, firefighter, president, president. everything. That's I wanted, a big one, man. I wanted to be it all, but I think, I think I wanted to be a coder, like a, yeah. like a coder or a hacker, because at that time I was, I think I was just dabbling a little more with my computer. And I had one of them old ones where, like, you thought the computer was in the monitor because of how chunky it was, yeah. you know? So, um, a hacker, man, did you want one of those uh, anonymous masks? Yes, I did. I looked on eBay back <laughs> in the prime days of eBay. I wanted one of those so bad. And, and I remember I would follow, like, everything they did closely. And I would tell everybody, like, oh, there's this cool hacker group, Anonymous. And they've got no leader. And they're kind of like this cool movement. And I remember, like, I, I think I told my uncle about it. And he's like, how is it that they don't have a leader? Who decides what to do and, and how to move the team? And I was thinking and kind of ruined it for me a little, you know. Because as a kid, you're always so into the idea of, like, a, it's a group, you know, and the group decides. And, yeah. But 
yeah that was that was me as a young lad and now my dream job i think i have my dream job i'm maintenance tech mm -hmm. at the end of an aluminum plant and honestly like growing up i was torn between software engineering and mechanical engineering because i just like to work with my hands but i also like to code and see my my programs come to life yeah no it's nice having a job where you can see how everything comes together you know hours of work putting in like i've learned a little bit of like website coding myself and it's frustrating you know one thing could be off and nothing can work but once you get it together it's really cool seeing how it comes together so no that's that's sweet man oh i'm freezing i'm freezing right now it's chilly all right Ugh. when i was 13 man like you said going through everything um, you know my dad was a firefighter when i was super young so i was always you know in the back of my mind um helicopter pilot was a big one too my dad was a helicopter pilot my grandpa was as well but i always had a fascination with the ocean man i i just loved it the fish the creatures just like the unknown of it so as a 13 year old i was like ah marine biologist man that yeah. sounds honorable i want to be a marine biologist that's dope i got to high school i took biology and i failed <laughs> i failed both semesters pretty bad and it really hit me when a couple months in and i wasn't doing that great my teacher was like oh yeah like what do you want to be i was like marine biologist but i hate biology she's like how's that gonna work yeah. <laughs> like if you don't like regular biology how are you gonna be a marine biologist oh, and yeah that snapped me to reality pretty quick <laughs> but uh, but now you know i've gone through a little bit of schooling for web and graphic design and i would just love to be freelance you yeah. know just be like my own boss take my own jobs that i want create my own schedule and I'm not like an artist by any means, mm -hmm. you know, I can't draw, but when it comes to, you know, Photoshop, Illustrator, yeah, they're really fun to use and it's, it's great taking an idea and being able to like make it into something. Oh yeah. So the same idea with code, yeah. but in design. Did you ever, like, I, I took the, the laptop classes in middle school, you know, you could elect to yeah. bring your laptop in and you could be all cool. Uh -huh. Did you ever, um, did they, did everyone ever show you like the cool thing where you take like, you take an image? For us, it was like Pokemon, you know? So I think I took like, I think at the time, I can't remember if it was like Charizard or Bulbasaur. And you, what you would do is you put them in the opposite corner of where like all your programs were. Yeah. And you do like little lines, like just in paint, like nothing crazy. And you do like little lines and you make it look it was the simplest thing, but like when you put that up as your wallpaper, you're like, this is 100% unique. I am a designer. Yeah. And it was one of the cooler things I think I've, I felt when I was in middle school. Yeah. No, I didn't take that class, but like it makes me wonder if I would have decided this path like earlier. You yeah. Because I, I didn't design it till, or I didn't choose design for a long time. Um, it was really only like two years ago that I decided to go into it. And luckily my brother um, did the program that, that I did first. So I had a, I had an end with it. You know, I had yeah. a really good recommendation from someone I knew personally um, instead of just like, you know, reading reviews about a certain college or program. Yeah. Um, and I was able to see, you know, what he's been able to do with his you know knowledge and experience and it's pretty dope what he's been doing so definitely that's the reason why i got into design but yeah it makes me wonder like if i would have taken that class in middle school if i would have liked it earlier if i would have yeah. been doing it ever since then but i don't know because like you know it was you, you only brought out your laptop really for it was language arts and social studies it was when you had the same teacher for both yeah and uh half of the time i think i stopped bringing my laptop like halfway through because i had a dinosaur like my laptop was square but it was in the air of the fat rectangular laptops and i just remember like 
I did everything in that class except take notes on my laptop. Yeah. Played games, watched <laughs> movies. We would like get the emulators and play Super Smash Bros. during class. Dude, so freshman year, yeah, I took a web design class. And it was, it was fun, you know, but this one kid downloaded this like free version of Halo and it spread like wildfire in our class, man. It started out with just me and him connecting, playing Halo during class when we were done with our, you know, homework and assignments. And then it just spread, dude. We were just passing the file to each person. And I remember getting up to like use the bathroom one day and I look at the class, Halo, 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 just all over the class, man. But our teacher had control of all the computers yeah and so he would send us messages like stop playing halo like get your work done and he would like shut down the program and stuff yeah that was funny dude yeah i remember i for me as in middle school we it was uh eighth grade is when i started bringing my laptop yeah. back to school again it was because halo was circulating so i had to hop on there and, and play with everybody good times <laughs> the good times all right so some pretty big changes in our dream jobs man oh absolutely and that's just what though over 10 years change but careers and dreams change all the time man i mean you could be 40 and change your career change your dream that's what a lot of people do nowadays i feel like i remember my professor uh, at UVU, he taught like a, it was a simple machines class. You know, you learned how to like program with ones and zeros. And he he would tell us like it's never too late, like to go back to school. It's never too late to finish. He said he finished his bachelor's degree at forty, but and now he like his teaching job is a side gig. Yeah, like he owns a a code analyzing company where like companies will be like well they copied our code and they'll send it to him and his team and they'll look it through and they'll be like yes no they'll tell the court like yeah they did copy or no they there's not enough here yeah so he's like big into like you do whatever dude there's no such thing as like an age cap really I yeah think that's, that's just true a, it's just like a stigma we put on ourselves and you know if, if you've got no issues change your career path i yeah. thought i wanted to be a software engineer covid happened and i my professors gave up and i gave up on them and then i took a step back and realized is this really what i wanted to do and yeah i was the biggest biggest blanket of like insecurity and doubt to yeah. come over me because i was like what i thought i had wanted for six years now is not what i want to do as a job yeah i like to code you know i like to take a problem and, and help a computer help me yeah but i didn't want to do it as a job no i do and i feel like that's something a lot of people nowadays are going through where they change their college major 15 times mm -hmm. like they just think one thing that you know maybe they enjoy as a hobby or they like the concept they get into the work and realize that it wouldn't be a fun job like a close buddy of mine he was doing um, coding and wiring as well um, as he was in college he got a part-time job teaching it to like little kids and stuff realized he hated actually doing it yeah and so that just changed his whole path as well so is this you can change your career whenever it's not set in stone so even if you do finish your career it's not set in stone yeah go like use your degree you've got you know get it get a job and then put yourself through school again you did it once you could do it again yeah you know no it's always really great seeing people go back to school my mom just got her bachelor's and she's 50 yeah she has her bachelor's man yeah and it's awesome you know yeah dreams change and leading us into our next question dream vacations dream vacations. i feel like for me i've had like 
50 different dream vacations, man. Because you, you just see, like, one thing online about, you know, the beaches of Hawaii. You're like, that's it. That's my number one place. That's where I'm yeah. going. And you see the northern lights in Iceland. You're like, nope, that's it. That's what I want to do. Yeah. And for me, right when I was about, you know, 13, 14, biggest thing for me was a Mediterranean cruise. I really wanted to just hit all those different countries and the major cities you know rome barcelona yeah athens and i was like mediterranean cruise would be the best yeah like, that'd be sick and like it's still something on my mind that i want to do um and then now just being a little older realizing that uh cruises like are great but at each port you stop in you don't have too much time and i want to really get to know the cities i i visit so for me, now my dream vacation is Iceland, man. Like, I've been just like blown away by videos of Northern Lights. And apparently, dude, I don't know if you knew this, um, last week they were seen over these mountains. No way. Yeah, dude. They, they weren't like the classic like green ones, you know, like the super vibrant colors. Yeah. It was more like kind of like a lavender in the sky a little pink at night yeah yeah some guy uh caught it from across the lake and i'm 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 glad i didn't see it because i want to see it first in iceland you know the og northern lights yeah dude yeah. just like way up there um the blue lagoon i just want to like soak in it man and iceland just seems so fun yeah iceland does seem dope dream vacation when I was younger, I see my family. You remember this? Like half the time, half the time you guys would text me in the summer. Yeah. Hey, you want to come hang out? And I'd be like, Sorry, dude, I'm in Mexico. You know. And you guys started running joke. Anytime I wasn't there, I was in Mexico. I don't know why. <laughs> it was literally like once. But like I went to Mexico a lot, and I just loved it down there. Because my parents, I don't know, I don't know why they would be more, like, not worried about us in Mexico uh -huh. than up here. Because everyone's like, oh, up here's safer, this and that. <laughs> Granted, you know, we when we went to Mexico, we didn't really stand out. Yeah. You know, we didn't, we didn't look rich. I, I spoke, I've spoke Spanish since I was, I think, I'm pretty sure it was my first language. Yeah. So my Spanish is impeccable. It's Mexican Spanish. So I never really stood out, you know, and we would we'd go to Mexico all the time and they put us in these like soccer day camps that had like soccer, basketball, and all this fun stuff. And we would go down and, you know, I'd always I'd always have a way with the ladies because I had a passport, you know. <laughs> I, I, I'm 99% sure that's what it was, you know. And nothing to do with my good looks or my charm but the fact that I had a passport and I just remember like that was those were dreams for me you know yeah I got to hang out with my friends go to Mexico there was no firework restriction it was fireworks year-round man every time we'd go down my cousins we'd go we'd run over to the to the market find the guy that's selling the fireworks get like 10 of everything you know and just go crazy at night and I, we just loved it down there but now that i'm older i think i've like really gotten into fishing mm -hmm. like really really good and i think i'd want to do like a like a fishing vacation you, you want to go up to like alaska do the salmon fishing yeah man? like i think it would be cool like you spend one day like on the coast of mexico mm -hmm. and then one day like in alaska on a fishing trip and then like japan japan is crazy okay. like obviously you know you got your your sushi yeah but like they're like crazy into fishing because i guess somebody smuggled bass mm. like okay i don't know if it was a japanese guy or or an american i don't know somebody smuggled the bass over there and they reproduced like crazy so they got bass over there but the bass over there are like just like built different yeah so <laughs> I think my dream vacation would just to be go around the world and just like fish like all those crazy cool exotic locations yeah and fish places where probably fish have never been fished you know yeah. except traditionally by a spear you know because 
there there are some big river monsters out there you know that's a crazy show man you seen river monsters yeah no it freaks me out what that guy finds sometimes but no that that would be sick man that reminds me uh, never seen the movie myself but it's one of my dad's favorite movies is end this summer it's same concept going around the world but it's surfing yeah just surfing at all the best hidden gems man all mm-hmm. the local spots that no one else knows about and you have to hike 10 miles back to get to you know this little cove that has the best beaches and there's two of them um and the second one is what my dad showed me a lot of clips of and it's yeah two just like teenagers from like i think like newport or huntington man and this is back in 70s or 80s and yeah they just go everywhere man costa rica france all over the world and so it just reminds me of that. And I mean, that'd be a great way to see the world. Go yeah. to all the fishing spots, man. And like, if that's what you're into and you find the like most unique fish or the different spots, like that'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Oh, for sure. It's just, yeah. I, I remember in college I had, cause I was, I went to college in North Dakota mm-hmm. cause I had a pole vaulting scholarship there. And uh, I guess they had that poster company. I don't know. I don't know if this is at every college or just like small colleges, but they had a poster company come in and they set up all their stuff, you know. And I got an Endless Summer poster thinking it was just like a California thing. Yeah. You know, I was like, oh, I got to get it because I'm from California. I'm in North Dakota. You know, I got to represent. And I got it. And it wasn't until like maybe two, three years ago that I realized it's it wasn't just like a cool poster with dope artwork it's yeah. it's an actual movie and I was like dang I was I was a poser <laughs> I was such a poser <laughs> Dude, that's like it's like people wearing jerseys of Messi yeah they don't even know who he is man. or it just looks cool or Kobe because everyone says he's the greatest he's he dope. must be so you got to gotta snag his jersey man yeah but no i i get that it they do have some great posters they do rep in california you gotta do it i gotta do it (laughs) you gotta do it i think i had that one and i think i had like a fight club poster with the rules of fight club i would quote fight club all the time and i've never seen it (laughs) to this day i haven't seen it it's like top 10 on my watch list right now though but I would always quote it because everyone knows it. Man. Everyone, everyone knows, it, knows yeah. it. It's a good, it's a good movie. Yeah, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Maybe we'll, when I watch it, we'll we'll, have to we'll, do a we'll fight talk club. about it. Yeah, a we'll bit. have to do a fight yeah. club. Yeah, so, but that's breaking the first rule of fight club. So. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know if we could get away with that one. Hey everyone, just going to jump in here real quick and give a shout out to our sponsor, Billet Bob Ammunition. If you need quick and free shipping on your ammo, hit them up. They are awesome. Uh, Definitely the highest level of customer service you can get. Uh, They provided us with our awesome lawn chairs and some of the audio equipment that we've been using. Uh, So a big thank you to Billet Bob Ammunition and we're great jump right back into the video uh, but click the link down below in the description Um, also check them out we're going to be tagging them on our instagram page as well Uh, so hit them up for your ammo needs all right what else do we have so we went through dream jobs dream vacations let's see all right all right superpower superpower this is probably the one where we'll end up fighting each other but I think the best superpower to have is teleportation. And that's your thoughts now, right? Not as a teenager? Or did you think the same as a teenager? Same, same as a teenager, same as now, because during that time, the movie Jumper came out. Good movie, man. Great. Underrated, for Un- sure. Sleeper of a movie. It was a yeah. great movie. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I was young, so I didn't really pay attention to like the acting or anything i just rewatched it like the other day man it's great is it held I up lo- i i loved it okay i i'm a huge hayden christensen fan so it held up yeah oh yeah 
So, you know, back then, teleportation, hated walking everywhere. Yeah. Got a slight upgrade when we all started longboarding. But, you know, it doesn't beat the fact that you could just think about where you want to go. Boom, you're there. Yeah. You know, how many, how many vacations could you go on? Get out of school and you're like, today, I'm going to go to Paris. Mm-hmm. Boom, you're in Paris. You do what you want to do. And then, boom, you teleport back nine o'clock do your homework go to sleep yeah and i like the way jumper shows teleporting you have to have been there or seen it with your own eyes to get there yeah so it's really cool because they have like their jump spots you know like yeah the specific places in mind where they can jump to and they're no no one will like see them or anything but no dude teleport that's just like it's op man it it is it really is because you think about it right flying that's just teleportation with extra work, right? Super speed, why run when I could just teleport there? Yeah. You know, super strength, I get, you know, but you'll never land a punch on me if I just teleport behind you and smack you upside the head every time. Yeah. You know? No, that's a good point, man. And, like, I feel like in comics and movies, they have to, they have to dumb down teleporting a little oh, bit like uh nightcrawler from x-men okay yeah he, he can teleport out of a closed space yeah that's how they like they end up trapping him in a box and he can't teleport out they really gotta they really have to nerf teleportation down <laughs> because that's how good of a power it is yeah you know when i was a teenager i i was thinking about this the other day trying to think like what i really thought was the best when i was you know 13 14 and I remember I used to have a flash wallet. And I was like, why did I have that wallet? Like, I never read DC or anything, but it was one, a dope wallet. Like, it was awesome. But then seeing a couple, like, individual, like, flash movies, you know, like the good DC, like, cartoons and stuff. Yeah. I realized how strong he actually is, man. Like, super speed is pretty cool and like you said like why run when you could teleport but like i i'm not just gonna copy you man but like super speed what he was able to do he could move through matter so he could walk through walls because he moved so quick yeah and he could move between like the matter of it um obviously he was super strong with it yeah he can well you've got the speed behind yeah you know so i think super speed was what i thought as a kid now it would probably be not exactly what like wanda has but like i'm i'm torn between wanda you know scarlet witch versus doctor strange yeah i think like being a witch or a sorcerer they're both very similar but it would be just like so nice man like what doctor strange is able to do is really cool it's yeah. really cool. It is like cool. the shields, the spells, the summonings. Yeah. Like I don't know, man. The mirror dimension, bro. The, yeah, no, exactly. Like being able to jump through dimensions is just insane. And you could make money being like a Doctor Strange type. Yeah. Cuz what you, you know what you could do? You go into, like, you get a smash room, go to one of those places. And you just make turn back a mirror time, dimension, yeah. And you just go go crazy, you know? Yeah. And they can break everything. And then once they're done, you just close it, you release it. Yeah. And everything's back to normal. You don't got to clean up. You don't got to buy new stuff. Nothing. You can make <laughs> millions, bro. It's true. You can also be a, a birthday clown. Do That's, some party tricks. Do some party <laughs> tricks with Dr. <Doctor> Strange. <laughs> Nah. but nah, super f- powers like it's fun to to think about like it may be super nerdy or anything but I mean there's a reason why comics and superhero movies and shows are so popular man nerdy. it's cause it's entertaining it is and like it takes a creative mind to even come up with those in the first place yeah you know so well, the thing is, like, my favorite thing that Stan Lee said 
This is about Spider-Man. I'm a huge Spider-Man guy. I'll defend Spider-Man till the day I die. First hero I think I saw, and like, I'm just a huge Spider-Man fan. Like, love him. Oh, you yeah. Know? And I, one of the biggest things I think Stan Lee said, I don't know if he said in an interview or whatever, but he said the reason why Spider-Man is, is the best, you know, is because he's masked. Anyone yeah. can see themselves under that mask. Yeah. Spider-Man always makes mistakes. He's like the most human superhero. He makes mistakes. He regrets them. He lives with that regret. Mm -hmm. He tries to overcome it, you know. That's why, personally, I think he's... I think we're going to have a guest. Yeah, I think we Hey, do. buddy. Typical. Hi, buddy. To be expected when you're outside. <laughs> but, honestly, like, that's... You know, when you can put yourself, like, if I was Spider-Man, yeah. then, then you know, superheroes are, they, they've won you over. The minute no, you start really, thinking, yeah. you know, if I was, if I was Spider-Man, if I was Flash, if I was Superman, it would be so cool. And you start thinking, and I, I just feel like that's what it's all about. No, it really is. And, I mean, rest in peace, Stan Lee, but... I'm a huge Marvel over DC guy. Mm -hmm. I, I respect DC. DC uh -huh. shows are... DC shows for the longest while have been... That's fine. what everyone says, yeah. Yeah. And I haven't seen a DC movie since... Whichever one came out last, either Suicide Squad, the first one, or Wonder Woman. But, like, Batman vs. Superman, never saw it. Wonder Woman 2, no. Justice League didn't get to it and like everyone says you know Snyder's cut's really good yeah it's like four hours I mean I don't have time for that but not uh, superpowers and superhero movies are just something I don't think if you're into it as a kid you'll never grow out of it mm -hmm. you know like you said it's it builds character in yourself thinking about you know these fictional characters that you just like want to be you dress up as is for Halloween oh, yeah. and I don't know the minds that came up with it like oh a ton of credit to them for imagination and just everything it's funny you say you say that because I remember thinking like dude if Spider-Man can get over over the fact that Uncle Ben died and it was his fault I'm pretty sure I can get through this week or like stuff like that you know like yeah. is the craziest thing and and you're always like well, they turned out fine. So this little inconvenience, reality is like, maybe it was a bad day, bad test. Yeah. It's like, I'll be fine, you know? I may not have superpowers like he does, but he's fine. Yeah. So I'll be fine. I feel like we're gonna have to bring this up later, man. I feel like we could talk about Spider-Man for forever. Oh, I could talk about Spider-Man forever. Yeah. Spider-Man 2099, dude. When I found out he's the Mexican Spider-Man, don't get me wrong, there's Miles, uh -huh. you know, and he's Hispanic, but 2099, he's Mexican-Irish, you know, so he, he really sticks to kind of like a, like the Hispanic, you know, Mexican parents born in the U.S. type deal. Yeah. And so, like, him to me is like, he is like my Spider-Man. I love his, his design. Mm -hmm. So cool. And, you know... I think the biggest thing reading the comics of 2099, his biggest thing was he never wanted to be Spider-Man. Yeah. And at any give every given moment, he he's trying to reverse it. He don't want it. He doesn't want the responsibility. Yeah. And if that ain't like the most human thing ever, you know, he's like these are cool powers, but I just don't want the responsibility. Yeah. And I think that's like so human, you know, a lot of us would be like I'd be so cool, but could you imagine being able to stop the things that you know a yeah. superhero can stop and then having to make the decision not to do them that would weigh on hard no yeah man just like the movies show it really well and i feel like we're, we're, we're gonna have to come back to this we'll man. Have to really, we're gonna just we're really just gonna continue back. on just spider-man because i mean we'll have to get into you know who's the better live action Mm -hmm. and all that because that's definitely yeah. yeah that's that'll stir the masses yeah for no, sure. that, that'll be a fun one so we'll, we'll 
we'll, we'll get to that we'll man. snip you know. it we'll yeah we'll move on yeah i mean just a, a good reminder to people listening subscribe you yeah know, we're we're gonna we'll do it that will happen um let's see so we've gone through dream jobs vacation dream superpower okay here we go here we go this is something that people think about all the time what would you do if you won the lottery million dollars was given to you because you got the winning ticket yeah because i i illegally purchased the winning ticket oh, at, yeah, yeah. at 13 at 13 yeah but they didn't care and they still cashed me out yeah. for it <laughs> well at 13 i'm i was pretty selfish you know and uh as most teenagers are you know. yeah we weren't poor you know we we definitely weren't poor we were we were middle class now we're in the middle class i don't i don't know we weren't middle on class is a big class <laughs> huge class we weren't on food stamps yeah you know we couldn't qualify for food stamps but we were still middle class you know paying off house paying off cars and, you know maybe we sometimes we could get the name brand stuff and sometimes we could do this and that and that's why we always went to mexico yeah money's last so much longer down there but dream ba- million bucks for starters you remember my backyard mm-hmm. horrible rocky dirt everywhere i'd revamp it yeah i'd update my basketball court and make it like a good basketball court because we're talking this basketball court we put so you know in concrete you're supposed to put like spacers so it can expand and yeah. not crack well we didn't take out the spacers so we got like wood strips in our cement yeah and, you know <laughs> when it rains or whatever and they start to creak up you'll be bouncing that ball and it'll bounce right out of yeah. your hands so i'd revamp the basketball court i'd throw in a pool because it's california you gotta have a pool man you gotta have a pool all, all the all of our cool friends had pools, man. Yeah. You but wanted to be the cool friend with the pool. I would love to have a pool. I feel like my backyard was, was good for it, but not not saying I wasn't you know, happy with my backyard, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's fine. You know, my parents listening. But. Yeah. <laughs> I loved, you know, I loved my backyard, too. It was it was ample enough for activities. I remember the neighbors had a, an electric dirt bike. We'd ride it back there because it's just so much room. Yeah. You know? So I'd probably do a pool, a basketball court. Back then, I was big into swords. Mm. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like a, a teenage boy thing. Big into swords. So I probably would have bought like a sweet sword collection. Yeah. And probably use some of the money to like revamp clothes probably buy i can't remember if the ps3 was out yet probably get a ps3 with all the games possibly yeah i think it was out i think it was just out yeah yeah and get all the games and then i'd probably use the remaining i don't know pro it probably honestly in all honesty it'd probably be like seven hundred and fifty thousand left after all of the stuff i wanted yeah i'd probably just give it to my parents because I just wouldn't know what to do with all that. Yeah, no, exactly. Maybe I'd buy a car. I don't know. I wasn't big into cars. I had a Hot Wheels. That was a 1969. Uh, it was a gold Stingray Corvette. Nice. Yeah. Sweetest Hot Wheels I've ever had. And it made me want a Corvette. Mm-hmm. But it had to be that year because it was just... I think that was the year that was the best looking body in my mind. I had the best looking body. I'm not a car guy. Don't ask me the engine. Don't ask me anything. Yeah. It looks cool. I like it. That's what matters, man. If it looks cool, you're you're fine. <laughs> but um, no, nah, I I get that. Like not knowing exactly what to do with it, because I mean, a million dollars ten years ago is a little bit more than it is now. Probably like ten million now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't think. I would really do anything with with my backyard just because we had friends at pools you know like we were fine we didn't need one ourselves but back then transformers man i really wanted that classic bumblebee camaro like it was that was like the car 
and just like you, I'm not a car guy. Mm -hmm. Don't know anything about what's inside of it, what it runs, horsepower, nothing like that. It just looked nice. And so I would definitely get a muscle car, you know, not knowing that it would cost me three times as much in gas over the next few years. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I'd probably take my dream vacation, take my family on that Mediterranean cruise I wanted to do. Um, I would hope that someone would talk me into investing it. You'd maybe hope. maybe yeah. some Bitcoin back then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but um, thinking about it now, you know, I was really cons like going through it because it, it's like when you think about it, it's really fun. It's like making a just the best Christmas list ever. Oh yeah. And so I was thinking, I really want a truck. I really hate paying gas, so I would get myself like top of the line hybrid truck i think that would be sweet i would get definitely a house nothing huge you know keep, keep it nice keep, keep it coffee, nice yeah but nothing that's gonna you know break the bank later on once i've spent the the million and then now i would definitely invest for sure oh sorry. smarter enough to, smart enough to do that now so yeah. with the million now probably the same thing buy a good comfortable house you know probably you know get get the truck I think I would get like a car of each category you know I think I'd get like a nice beefy truck I'd get not a Prius I don't know. have you seen like the new Corollas mm -hmm. Camrys they are fire yeah and they get so many miles to the gallon now it's insane i think i would do also like hybrid yeah a hybrid sedan you know just for long trips and a, you gotta have like a like a crossover mm -hmm. crv a, a rav4 you know one of those in-betweeners that's like you know are we going to be adventurous well it'll be fine you know yeah. if we if we do no, decide exactly. to adventure no dude no i i get that because I love my little hybrid Civic right now. Mm -hmm. It's like 40 to the gallon, so That's it's super so nice. nice. Um, it's a great commuter car, great for long trips. I love my CRV, so you know, I've got my little hatchback. Um, but yeah, I really want a truck. You know, my dad always had one. Uh, they're just so much fun to drive and just so useful. Um, I, I would probably still get a little sports car yeah. and don't really it's not practical so maybe I, I would probably just go down to like Vegas and like race them you know that track down there yeah just for fun so I at least know what it's like I don't need one yeah I don't really want one right now either it just brings up insurance <laughs> well that and they're they end up just being garage princesses anyways yeah know? and like if you're if you're into like fixing cars maintaining them having them as like your show car that's great like i respect that it's i love going to car shows but it's just not for me i yeah. don't need it yeah um yeah and then the, what's left invest take a, a nice european or southeast asian or hawaiian vacation you know some someplace nice for my family and I mean that's a dream, man. I yeah. don't play the lottery, but that yeah. <laughs> and you can't hear, but mm. yeah. all right. To wrap up this episode, so we went over a lot of questions, and I want you guys to ask questions like that to your friends and family, and to yourself as well. Just kind of see how you've changed since you were a kid. Um, everyone goes through a lot of different life experiences and change so it's just kind of nice to see growth you know going from an un unpractical muscle car to a hybrid for something better gas good for the miles yeah, yeah something you don't think <laughs> something about safe for the family a good old minivan even i'd take it minivans are dude have you seen the minivans now? dude they, some are nice they're crazy dude they have like full-on like movie theaters in there and yeah. sensors where you just put your foot under and it the whole car like folds down 
Yeah, dude. It's well, awesome. Like the biggest thing is talking to some guys at work, and I think they got like a, a minivan that's a rental for uh -huh. like four of them, and like they just turned it into the man van, and nice. it's it, they're just so spacious and like they're honestly yeah they they're they're a little rough looking on the outside but dude they are luxury at a price point yeah no this reminds me if i didn't mention this if i got a million dollars i would i'd be mad at myself my dream car is a volkswagen bus the bus split shield in the front yeah you know, so not the full windshield because when it's two you could pop the mouse and when you're chilling at the beach you know you got some it's good airflow i would deck it out you know this super cool and that's that's like the that's the dream car even that's, if it's not practical man i would have that as a garage baby that is the california dream car right there it'd be nice but all right all right so to wrap this up you know these are great conversation starters we think so um great to to look back and see how your mentality has changed and it, it's been fun been a great episode um to wrap it up what advice would you give your 13 or 14 year old self and ask yourself this question too because um, a lot of it when you think back and you go through different pieces of advice that others have given you or that you know now uh, makes you appreciate a lot and for myself you know i'll give you a second to think about it because i've thought about this um, if I could go back, I would tell myself to, to make better connections, make better friendships, maintain those friendships, um, be better and nicer with, with teachers, especially, and keep, keep tabs on them, because yeah. connections is, is the way to go in life, I feel like. Yeah. If you ever need anything, you can find something through anyone and if you have those connections and those relationships like if you fall on hard times ever there's always going to be someone there yeah so i've luckily made good connections in my life um definitely could have could have kept some better relationships better communication with friends or there's you know people I used to consider best friends I don't talk to them anymore you Me. know yeah no legit like yeah. we didn't it wasn't like a, a spite thing or anything it's just you just lose contact man it's it's hard when you don't it's easy when you're younger when you're in high school when you're even maybe in college you know you see them just like all you the see time them every day yeah and and then it's when you realize you know it's gonna take more than just seeing someone every day because you won't see them every day anymore yeah. you know you're gonna have to text you're gonna have to call and that's i think that's that's like one of those things that why i feel like when you're out of high school you just lose so many friends yeah sometimes it's not that they weren't quality friends you know it's it's just the fact that your your relationship with that person never went further than just because you saw them every day you know yeah. it's a convenience thing but now you have to make the effort and, and a lot of the times that just slips our mind yeah and like you said it's not the quality of the friend it's can slip your mind or it's a convenience thing and a lot of people I feel like can take it personally They're like yeah this person they won't hit me up it's like well have you texted them yeah like, no I haven't because they haven't texted me be that first person you know um, just a few weeks ago one of my best friends Justin uh, I was just sitting at home doing some homework doing some projects and I get a call from him it was really nice caught up for you know 10-15 minutes and made my week that same week a friend that I met at a summer camp randomly I've seen him like once or twice after that in the span of what is it like eight years now uh, he called me too yeah just randomly he was driving thought of me called me and it, it was great 
yeah. it, it felt amazing and like I, I could be better with with my friends and that's a goal for the year um to rekindle relationships man yeah i think the biggest thing honestly like if you text somebody and they're a bad texter i've got a good friend you know horrible texter <laughs> horrid i could i could text them today they probably wouldn't even reply till next year if that yeah call them give them a call it's a lot harder to reject a call yeah yep. maybe calling isn't as great but then then you got you can reminisce like old times like we are now yeah just talk just you know shoot it for a little bit and, and talk and catch up yeah it doesn't even have to be meaningful talk no just just talk you know a lot of a lot of friendships i feel just rekindled simple call text let's hang out let's go get lunch i know everything's getting expensive nowadays so i don't know maybe just go out and get a cup of water <laughs> yeah somewhere get some free water at the dealership you know yeah go hang out <laughs> at a dealership and or you know go get some fries go yeah. you know who doesn't love fries yeah we'll have to do an episode on what fries are the best because i had some fries this week from a place that i never thought i'd have fries from uh -huh. and they were they were delicious they were some good fries we got to do that thing that's you know popular with sodas where you're blindfolded and you test sodas i have, I have a palate I have the best palate, and I guarantee you I will go 5 for 5, 10 for 10. I will go... On sodas? Yeah. Or anything, really? You think? Anything, really. I'm 99% I'm sure that I can do it. I'm not going to put money on I it. Was, I was super confident like that, man. I got like 2 out of 5. It's difficult. But also, also in my defense, first time we did it, we had a bendy straw and bendy straws make it super carbonated and when it's carbonated it, it loses the taste and yeah. no nah, i'm just making excuses but it's okay <laughs> no we'll, we'll do that that'll be fun we will well we'll try you know fries maybe a plain burger from a couple different places see if you can tell a difference yeah but, all right um back on track advice to your younger self what would it be to myself this is probably 13 14 if i was maybe a freshman in high school just be I would tell myself to just be honest with how I felt about someone to that person whether it be a guy or girl you know this isn't solely for for girls you know it's also for your friends you know for your family too family no. too yeah just just like, be up front like i don't thinking back i was so like oh i don't you just play footsie so long with you know maybe uh, this might be a little more focused towards you know someone you're attracted to but like i remember is this is the stupidest game of cat and mouse do they like me maybe they like me i like them i'm gonna ask them i'm only gonna like them if they like me no yeah. dude Go up to her, him, her, whatever, and just be like, hey, I think you're cute. I I think, you know, you're attractive and, and let's hang out. I want to get to know you. Or dude's pissing you off. Dude, you're pissing me off. Bug off, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, just be straightforward. Don't, there's, life is so fast so fast so short yeah high school it's, it was a blink of an eye and you I, just spend weeks on these games yeah and it you like you said it, it could be with could be with a girl could be with a friend yeah you know maybe a friend of yours you know is Being pissing you off yeah. is, is bugging you or um it, it could go either way man like if your friend you notice is sad don't ignore it just be honest be yeah. like hey i've noticed you're acting different what's up family members like yeah obviously parents a lot of parents not not every parent you know do things out of love yeah <laughs> but maybe it's annoying you yeah maybe you're in a bad mood hurt your feelings let your parents know they'll yeah. 
they'll respect it. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Unless um, you have parents like mine, they'll just whoop you. <laughs> but shouldn't but, stop you. No, just like, I, I like what you said. Honestly, it, it goes in anything, man. Even jobs, you know? Just be honest. Yeah, no, that's a good one. Just be straightforward. It's like, like, I think my senior year was when I, was when I, like, I decided that this is how I would live my life going forward. That was like the defining year. I realized how much success it brought me in terms of like social. And when I say success, success for me is that I am happy with who I am yeah. and I am happy where my life is going. That is what a successful person is to me. Mm -hmm. If you're happy with who you are and you're happy in the direction you're headed, I say you're successful. Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. you're doing what you want. You know, it's, it's what you want. Yeah. So that year for me, the most successful year and, and every year since because I've just been straightforward. I, I speak my mind. It gets me in a lot of trouble, you know, but I it's just I've just never I've never gone to bed thinking I should have said something. Yeah, because I'll always say something. I just I've just refused to stand back. No, that's good. It's such a simple concept that can go miles, you know. Um, it's obviously something talked about and taught since we're young. You know, always be honest, but a lot of people, you know, pick and choose. So, yeah. that's, no, that's really good advice. Um, I think that's a great place to to end the first episode. Yeah. Some great thoughts there. Um, I think we ran over what we had in mind. <laughs> yeah. Ran over time, but that's fine. Uh, we're not... I don't think we really need a, a set time for this podcast because that's, that's the point of it is these conversations where you, know, you text your wife, yeah, I'll be in in... in 30 minutes I'll be home and you accidentally stay out for another hour or two because you're just talking <laughs> or hanging out with your friends at night and you lose track of time and you're like oh my it's curfew was yeah. yeah my curfew was like three hours ago uh oh <laughs> <laughs> but those those make for the best best conversations um hope you guys enjoyed it um this is obviously something very new for us so thank you for tuning in and supporting um, please like and share and subscribe. Um, like, share, subscribe. Like, share, subscribe. <laughs> no. Comment down below. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, thanks, and we're going to be putting out hopefully episodes every week or every month if times get busy. Uh, so be patient. This is, like I said, new to us, but we're excited. Yeah. Um, have a good week. Have a great week. Great week. Because